1961, Michael Rockefeller's search for native art on the island of New Guinea turned into a search for the man himself. New Guinea, the last Dutch colony in the east, was a wild and untouched island, and that was home to the indigenous Asmat people. Even with missionaries present for over a decade, the Asmat maintained their own way of life, believing that spirits directly impacted the world around them. They directed their actions towards pleasing or deceiving those spirits. This led to practices that were completely foreign to much of the world. For instance, the Asmat were literally headhunters. During the frequent violence between neighboring tribes, they would consume their killed foe's brains. Then, they would dismember, cook, and eat the victim. The violence wasn't reserved for the natives. A mere four years before the fateful journey of Michael Rockefeller, the Dutch controllers of the island colony responded to a particularly deadly tribal conflict by killing five Asmat men, many of whom were community leaders. This was the world that Michael chose to explore. His parents, both founders of art museums, taught him to love art collecting, particularly non-Western art. A 1960 scouting trip to New Guinea proved fruitful, leading the quiet, modest 23-year-old to plan a return trip. In 1961, while making stops at various villages along the coast, Rockefeller's catamaran capsized. Waiting for the teenage native guides to return with help seemed unwise, as they drifted further and further away from land. Michael stripped down to his underwear and tried to swim to shore, leaving his Dutch anthropologist friend with the boat. The friend was discovered and rescued later that day. Michael Rockefeller was never seen again. News of his disappearance created a media frenzy. Journalists even traveled with his family when they made the trip to New Guinea. The Rockefellers enlisted thousands of volunteers to help search on land while boats and aircraft scoured the coast. Nine days later, they headed home brokenhearted. Michael was declared dead by drowning, but speculation ran wild as to what actually happened to him. Some theorized that he fell victim to a crocodile or shark attack. Others assume he met his end at the hands of the Asmat people, perhaps in retaliation for the deaths of their tribesmen four years prior. Dutch missionaries living with the Asmat at the time claimed to have heard shockingly detailed confessions from the native men who found, killed, and ate the castaway. One man even described how his victim was wearing only underpants. The Dutch government didn't investigate until the next year. The police officer's findings matched that of the missionaries, and he even saw what appeared to be Michael's skull. But they hid this story from the Rockefellers and the public. A more positive theory asserted that the member of American royalty gave up on his life of privilege to stay with the people who so intrigued him. Supporting this far-fetched notion was a video filmed eight years after his disappearance. In it, a white man was clearly visible among the Asmat warriors of New Guinea. The Dutch government shot down every theory and rumor, possibly out of fear of losing their colony. All of the testimony and evidence and speculation has created a lasting mystery, and the true end of Michael Rockefeller's art hunting expedition may never be known. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.